So here's something absolutely fantastic that they've released with Ableton Live 12.1, which is currently in beta release. Now this thing's called Drum Sampler. As you can see here, it is a new instrument. So basically the way it works is you bring in a sampler like that, and then what you're gonna do is in this little blank space here, you're gonna go ahead and put in a sample. Now this sample needs a snare. So let's go ahead and find ourselves a nice snare. Let's put that one in there. So literally just need to drag it in there like that. And there it is. So we have it within, wrapped within a sampler. Now actually at its core, the sampler is pretty basic, but it has some extra features which make it really, really useful. Once you start automating those features, it can be really a game changer. So let's just check out this basic loop that I created. So there's that snare. Like any sampler, you can change the start position, the end position, the gain, attack, hold, and decay. So let's just do that quickly so you can hear how that sounds. Let's increase that start position. Let's reduce the length. And obviously we're not gonna to touch the gain because we know what the gain does. Let's try attack. So this could be used maybe to soften the attack and hold. This is really like defining how much amplitude goes in that volume. So we want a lot of amplitude, we increase the hold. We want less, we reduce the hold. So just keep that to its standard. And with decay, this is the time needed to travel from the maximum down to zero, so let's just do that. Okay, and now we've also got transpose and detune. Excellent, so we've gone through the really basic main functions here of this, basically what I call a sampler. And then there's two other sections. There's the FX section and the filter section. So what we're gonna do is mess around with the FX section. The, the FX section has multiple different algorithms. You've got stretch, loop, pitch, bend. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to listen to a few of them just to see how they sound. Now, the other thing I wanted to say also is you have kind of this XY matrix. So if you increase to the right-hand side, basically everything increases. Factor and grain in this case increase and to the left-hand side, basically grain goes down and factor stays, and this is where everything is zero, and this one here is grain. So it's kind of an XY thing, which is pretty useful when you listen to what I'm about to show you. So let's go through it right now. This is stretching the sample, or opening it up. So that's pretty cool. So let's go and try loop. And you can see these pictures basically give you a different kind of feel to how these effects basically affect the sample. And length. What I would have liked to see, and maybe it's possible, I just can't see it here, is something that's linked basically to the BPM, but that's fine, we can live with this. And then pitch envelope, let's go and listen to that. Let's move this around. Okay, and let's now listen to punch. I like punch, by the way. So once you move punch to the right-hand side, it kind of gives you a bit more of a clap effect. It really removes a lot of that body from the snare. And I can see this being useful for both snares and kicks. Okay, and now we also have 8-bit FM. We're just gonna try a 8-bit FM and noise just to hear how they sound just quickly. Let's go to FM. And noise. There's really a lot of noise in that sample, so you can barely notice the difference when you add noise. 
Now, what I want to do now is we just keep noise in there. I want to mess around with the filter. You can obviously switch the filter off. Actually, you can switch the effects off too. But we're going to add filter here, and you've got these preset type filters. But what we can do here is literally just play with the frequency and the resonance. Let's just go and take a listen. It doesn't give you many filter choices, but this still sounds pretty good. And obviously with automation, you can do some really cool things in there. And then finally, you have velocity and volume sections. So it's all really cool. And what I really like about this is it's not just necessarily used or well, useful for drums. You can use it for samples. So a bit earlier, I recorded my voice. And I'm not the best singer, but I recorded my voice as a backing to this little loop. It's kind of Let's just ignore that little bit there, but what we have here is a bit where I'm saying, all right. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so let's take that right. away and move that sample into the sampler. So let's just move that in here. And let's just increase this, because you can see there's a bit of a gap between where the sample starts. So let's increase the starting position so it's around there. And so I've basically replaced the snare with a sample of my voice. All right. Okay, so let's just bring it back to stretch. So my sample is pretty low in volume, so I'm going to increase the gain there. I'm just messing with the stretch algorithm. We can actually perhaps reduce the, the transposition there. Let's get rid of that piano so we can really hear what's happening here and we'll get rid of my uh, little background thing. And let's just try loop now. Let's increase that transposition. Let's say resonance and frequency. So, as you can tell, I'm having a lot of fun with this, but seriously, it's a really useful tool and it's just another extra great thing they've added basically for free in version 12.1. This is actually downloadable as a beta at the moment if you are currently a customer of Ableton. If you've got the time, I would highly recommend that you check it out.